Hello, fifth grade. Welcome back to Music Class Online. I hope you had a great week, and I'm really excited to share this week's lesson with you. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be looking at another jazz musician. Did you know that April is Jazz Appreciation Month? How about that? That's why we've been studying so many jazz musicians. So, this week we're going to look at a musician called John Coltrane. And Jacques Coltrane was this, uh, he played saxophone, so we're going to look at some saxophone. And he wrote a song that's really powerful called Alabama. We're going to study about what that song is, what it makes you feel, and also why uh, John Coltrane wrote it. Are we of two goals for today? The first is I can identify a saxophone and name its characteristics. And two, I can respond creatively to a song. Let's get started. So the saxophone is a picture of it on the screen. Um, the saxophone was invented around 1840 by Adolf Sax, who was a Belgian instrument inventor. And Belgium is a country in Europe, sort of a little bit uh, northeast of France. Um, the saxophone is part of the woodwind family, even though the body of it's made of brass. It actually has a clarinet mouthpiece, a clarinet is another woodwind instrument made of wood, but the saxophone is made of brass, which is what makes it so different. Um, there are lots of different types of saxophones um, because they're played in different octaves. So there are ones that play high, like a violin plays high, and ones that play low, like a bass plays low. Saxophone players are called saxophonists, so if you ever hear that word, that's what that means. Uh, Lisa Simpson from The Simpsons plays saxophone, so she would be a saxophonist. The saxophone was originally popular in military bands because it could play much louder than other woodwind instruments. It has a very large volume. Um, it was later used in vaudeville and ragtime bands. Um, and then starting the 1920s, it was used in big band jazz bands. Um, since then, it has become, I think, the iconic jazz instrument. Whenever you think of somebody playing jazz, you usually think of them playing a saxophone. Um, one famous saxophonist um, was John Coltrane. Here's a picture of John Coltrane. Um, he, as you can see, was an African-American, a black man. Um, and he was very famous uh, in his time. And let's learn a little bit more about him. So John Coltrane, he lived from 1926 to 1967. A, a short life, he died at age 40 of liver cancer. Um, and I think it, you know, a really tragic death for the jazz community because he was so influential. Um, he was one of the most influential and adventurous saxophonists of music history. He did a lot of new things with the instrument and with jazz. He developed one of the most powerful and explosive styles of jazz. So not something subdued, but something really bombastic, really out there, really loud. Um, a lot of his jazz music had lots of really fast notes that came in sort of waves, um, and it was described by one music critic, as, music critic as sheets of sound. So it's like it's raining notes on you. It's really heavy, like if you go on a really thick thunderstorm. It feels like that, but with music. He also was a very spiritual man. Um, his spiritual beliefs were a melding of Christian, Hindu, Muslim, and uh, Zen Buddhist traditions, and it really influenced how his music. Um, he incorporated spirituality into his music, especially in his later part of his life. Um, this is a quote from him. My music is the spiritual expression of what I am, my faith, my knowledge, and my being. We're going to look at a specific piece of music by John Coltrane called Alabama. But before we get to that, we have to, think, we have to examine a piece of history that influenced that song. So I'm going to tell you about the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. This is a very important and tragic piece of history for the United States. Um, this event happened on September 15th, 1963 in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, Alabama, as you know, is one of the southern states. 
Um, and because of that, it was a rallying point, and especially the church in Birmingham was a rallying point for civil rights activities in the spring of 1963. As you remember, civil rights movement was the movement of black people joined by white allies to gain civil rights for themselves. Before that point, um, black people and white people were segregated in this country, which means they couldn't be in the same spots. So for example, white people went to a white school, black people went to a black school. White people ate at white restaurants, black people ate at black restaurants. And a lot of black people and some white people thought this was really unfair. Because even though things were supposed to be equal, like even though the white school and the black school were supposed to be equal, the white school sold a lot more money than the black school. Because of this, because the church was a rallying point, a meeting point, somewhere where people would gather to plan out these civil rights activities, it was a target by the Ku Klux Klan, or the KKK, which is a white supremacist terrorist organization. The KKK uh, was the most prominent organization that wanted to prevent black people from getting civil rights. They viewed themselves as superior to black people. Um, and because of that, they acted in violence to suppress and to intimidate and to scare black people um, so that they wouldn't keep working for civil rights. Um, unfortunately, many people still held hold these beliefs today, and the Ku Klux Klan is still an active organization in the United States. And the KKK on September 15th, 1963, four um, members of that organization planted a bomb at the church, um, and it exploded, and it killed four black teenage girls and injured 22 others. Um, it was obviously horrific and tragic that these young children, they were teenagers at the time, 14 years old, 11 years old. It was tragic that these young people were ended up being the ones that died because of this bomb. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., described it as one of the most vicious and tragic crimes ever perpetrated against humanity, and I think that still is applicable today. Um, after the bombing and the media attention, uh, the country was sort of regalvanized. It was uh, made more aware of the struggle of black Americans to attain equal protections um, in the United States but it seems like a, a high price to pay to get more recognition for those facts. So, um, the song Alabama. It's one of several pieces written by black musicians um, in response to the Birmingham bombing. Another one that was inspired in part by the Birmingham bombing was the song Mississippi Goddamn by Nina Simone. Nina Simone is the musician we looked at last week. Um, this song, Alabama, appeared on Coltrane's 1963 album, Live at Birdland. Um, so he wrote it very quickly after the, the bombing happened. Um, we're going to listen to the song, and I want you to be thinking as you listen to the song about what emotions words, colors, and stories the song makes you think of. Um, if you happen to have a paper and a pen or a pencil nearby, you might want to grab those. You can write down or draw while you listen. We're going to watch the video of the song um, of John Coltrane and his band playing it at a live performance for a television show. So let's get started again as you're watching. Remember, you're thinking about words, or emotions, the words, colors, stories, all the things that the song makes you think of. Okay.
hopefully that was as powerful for you as it was uh, for me. Um, so, as you were thinking, I hope you were, as you were listening, I hope you were thinking about what I asked. What were some of the emotions, words, colors, and stories that the song made you think of? Just to give you sort of some of my ideas. Um, one of the big emotions that came to mind when I was listening to the to the piece was sort of pain, um, loneliness, grief, um, some colors, like mostly blues and greens with some hints of other things. But obviously I don't want you to take my words, I want you to think about what you thought of. But that's some of what I might responded to that song, to that piece. Um, so there's some questions on the screen and you're going to respond to these in your exit ticket. Um, what are some emotions you've heard in the piece? What are some words or feelings that come to mind when you listen? Did the music remind you of any colors? Did you imagine any stories with a song played? Who was in that story? What were the characters? What were the scene? So you, you, I'm asking you to answer these four questions on your exit ticket. And then I want you to choose one way to respond to the song. Um, the first way is to write lyrics for it. So we've been practicing writing lyrics. We did that with the blues assignment. We did that with Nina Simone last week. Um, I want you to, if you choose that one, to write new words to the song. Obviously the song doesn't have any words. The piece doesn't have any words. But you can write words that you would think go with it. So think about the um, emotions and the words that you were thinking about, the feelings that came to mind when you were listening, and use those to guide how you write lyrics. Or you can write a story. Think about who are the characters in that story, where are they, what's the setting, what are they doing. Or you could draw a picture um, and then use the uh, colors, emotions, and stories you were thinking up to sort of guide that picture. So you can choose one of these three ways to respond. You can even do more than one if you want, but do at least one. Either write lyrics, write story, or draw a picture, um, and then upload those uh, using the, Google, the exit ticket or by uploading directly to, to the assignment. Um, so our wrap up as a reminder, you have the exit ticket and then as always, video on Flipgrid. I thought it would be useful this week to just show you the exit ticket because I'm doing something a little different this week. We're gonna use uh, Google Forms instead of a Google Doc, which hopefully should be easier for those of you who are on a mobile device like a tablet or a phone. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, so here's an example of what your lesson will look like. I haven't posted it live yet, but this is sort of what it will be. As always, I'm telling you what to do. Um, give you an intro and then saying, one, watch the lesson video. And that's what this is, so you're doing that. Two, complete your exit ticket. So if I click on this link, it will open the exit ticket form. So this is a Google form. It should work on your phone or tablet as well. So, oh, and you need to be logged in to your NYC Students account to fill out the forms. You just, if it asks you to sign in, you just sign in using your NYC Students account information. But if you're already in Google Classroom, it, I think it should be fine. Write your name so I make sure I know who is who's. And I've, list, I've put the video again. Before you answer these, I'd recommend that you watch and listen to the recording again. So you click on the link to start the video. Then as I told you, I want you to answer the questions. What are some emotions you heard in the piece? What are some words or feelings that the music made you think of? What colors did the music make you think of? What stories did the music make you think of? And then choose one or more of the following three ways to respond. So one, as I said, was to write lyrics. Two, write a story. Or three, draw. I put a little um, extra thing here so you can tell me if you drew a picture or not um, and how you got it to me. So if you chose to upload it to a classroom, then just click this first one. If you um, having trouble with that, just want to email it to me, you can do that one. And if you did not draw, 
then you can just click that one if you if you need to draw some click something. Um, if you upload it to Google Classroom, you should be able to, um, if you're on a computer, click the button that says Add or Create. Um, if you're on a phone, I, I think it'll actually say Add Attachment. And you'll have to go below where it says Your Work. Um, and then you can, on a phone, you can just add attachment and say Take Picture and then take the picture. Um, if you are using a laptop, you'll have to take a picture using a device like a phone, um, send that picture to your um, laptop, and then add or create and click on File to upload that picture. After done your exit tickets, number three is to record. Uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, this is just telling you actually if you if you draw a picture, this is how you upload it. So the same thing I just said. Um, if you after you've done your exit ticket, then you're doing a Flipgrid assignment like most weeks. Uh, Flipgrid again, you click here, it'll take you to the assignment, fifth grade music, that's what you want, you click log in with Google, you're going to use your NYC students account, NYC students account, and I click log in, it takes me to Flipgrid. You can also um, use the Flipgrid app and use the code ps 91 to get um, to this page. Um, as you can see, the pinned assignment is John Coltrane. I've left a video just reminding you of what I want you to do, which is just tell me what emotions, words, colors, and stories the piece Alabama by John Coltrane that you think of. Um, I even put um, a uh, link here to the video so you can watch again. If you click this button, it'll actually read out the words for you, at least in English. I'm not sure how it's going to work with the Spanish. You record a video by clicking the green button. And when you do that, it will take you to this page. And you should be able to see my face. Hello! Um, and you click the record button, you click next, and then that's how you record the video. Um, Flipgrid is a part of the assignment, so I expect to see an exit ticket and a video on Flipgrid. If you're having trouble doing a video on Flipgrid, take a video um, using some other method. You can just upload it um, to Google Classroom or email to me um, the same way you would with the picture. So we read the instructions number three. Um, if you've forgotten, you can also go back and do some of the videos um, from last week's. As you can see, there's only four videos from last week's assignment and four videos from the week, week before that. So please do go back and listen um, and complete these as ones as well if you forgot to do those. Um, after you've done your exit ticket, and you've, once you've done this, you make sure you click Submit, and you're on your Flipgrid. Then you have to click Mark as Done or Turn In. It's going to say Mark as Done if you haven't uploaded anything, if it's just a, the um, form, or Turn In if you actually uploaded a picture or a video. Then I will know to listen and watch. So at this point, make sure you go do your exit ticket and post your video on Flipgrid. And I look forward to seeing those. Let's sing our goodbye song. Ready? One, two, ready, sing. Now it's time to go. We've been singing and playing all the day. Until tomorrow we must say. Now it's time to go.